Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. When you were born again in Christ Jesus, you've got everything in you that you need, and the rest of the Christian life is learning how to rest in what Jesus has already done. We already have these things, and it was just really about resting in the finished works of Jesus. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach through a series that I've entitled, You've Already Got It. I tell you what, this is a powerful teaching. I've really enjoyed this. It helps me to go back over and refresh all these things. This is one of the greatest applications of what I've taught under the series that I call Spirit, Soul, and Bodies. It's talking about who you are in Christ or in the Spirit. And that's the truth that just unlocked the Word of God to me. And one of the revelations that understanding it was my spirit that got born again, it's in my spirit that I have everything. One of the benefits or one of the revelations that came out of that is this teaching about you've already got it. When I understood that I am complete in my spirit, that my spirit is as perfect as it's ever going to get, well, then that changed my paradigm. Instead of asking God, to bless me, I believed I was already blessed. Ephesians 1 3. Instead of asking God to heal me, I believed that I was already healed. By his stripes I was healed. 1 Peter 2 24. And the verses that we used in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19, the same. His exceeding greatness of his power towards me, the same power that raised Christ from the dead. When I realized that I already had all of this stuff, it changed the way I related to God. Instead of begging him to give me something, I started acknowledging what he had already given me and started living out of that. And I could go on making applications of this forever. Just about everything that the Lord has shown me somehow or another traces back to my identity in Christ and the fact that everything I will ever need ever need in the future has already been given unto me in my spirit and it's a matter of drawing it out Instead of going and, and getting God to give me something new. I tell you, that has just radically changed my life. And that's what we've been talking about. The last couple of days, I've been focusing on Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, where 
where it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. And verse 9 says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. Wagamira anti kubanga mwalo kukaruachisa oruo kukiriza sote chava jemuliche chirabo chava ili katonda oruo muenda wagamira anti chava mbiko rabia mwe omuntu yenale moku chonyu mirizanga. And I've been showing that grace is something that God does independent of us. It was done 2,000 years ago. Iramba dembaraga nti echisa checho katonda che yakola nga fetutuina chetuchenyi gidemu ya chikola demi yaka nkume bili ejise. Through Jesus, grace and truth came by Jesus. John chapter 1 says, O kuyita mu Yesu kubanga echisa chadja kura kristo iranga yokane chisoka wagamba. And so it was done independent of us 2,000 years ago. The supply was made before the need ever existed. And faith isn't something we do to get God to move. But rather, it's resting in what God has already done. Na yo kukiriza kwe kuhumulida mwecho kristu che ya koleda. And it takes effort to rest. Adeka nkubulide chitu wala manyi o kuhumula. You know what I want to do today is to use these verses in Hebrews chapter 4. Norecho katilero mba denja gala nko esoru njiriru no oluri mwebula niya uh, esure yokuna. And these verses used to make no sense to me whatsoever. I struggled with this for a long time because if you look down here like in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 11 let us labor therefore to enter into that rest man how do you labor to rest you know, when you get tired and you want to go to sleep or something, you don't labor to rest. You just lay down and just fall asleep. It seems like it's effortless, but this is talking about let's labor to rest. Chikuli kiranga, e chintu chota ina kuteka mumanyi. Na hewa necha wandikiwa chigambi, ntikale tufuwenga atoku ingi na mchiu murecho. And because of my wrong concept of what this was talking about, for a long time this was hidden from me. No recho, oroku banti chino sachi tegiri la woku maraka wanga kanene, chino no chankweke wakati. But now the things that I've been sharing with you about how everything is done in Christ, and now what we are doing is learning how to rest just rely upon what he did and us not get into self effort and try and make it come to pass on our own now that i've understand understood those things, it has opened this whole thing up to me. So let's look at this here in Hebrews chapter 4. The context of this, if you were reading in chapter 3, it was using the Israelites coming out of the land of Egypt and saying that it was because of their unbelief that they didn't enter into the promised land. The generation that actually came out of the land of Egypt they got into doubt and unbelief and tempted God in the wilderness, and because of it, they never entered into the promised land. Their children. Or the ones that entered in. And so that's the context, and that's what he was talking about. In chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1, 
Na yeka tububo olabi ya mtimu mebulani ya nya ulusoka. It says, let us therefore fear lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Abebulani ya nye mwa gamba, ntikale tutienga, nti okusubiza kwa kuyingira mu umulo, ngabo, tuchia, ngabo chiteke dua, omuntu ye na kumwe alemo kulabi kanga, takutuseko. Kubanga na fe, tuwabu liruenjiri, eranga bo, na ye chigambo choku ulira, techaba gasa bo, kubanga tebaga tiwa mshikukiriza, wamuna bo, haba ulira. That is a radical statement right there. Chigambo chino chamanyi nyoba nangi. You know, there's a lot of people that say, well, the word of God promises, and they, they say, I'm standing on these promises. Omanyi waluwa bantubanji abata andiko kugamba, e chigambo chakatonda vechiti we chigamba, katineve igama antiva imiride kuchigamba echo. But then if they don't see something come to pass, they immediately go to saying, well, God's word said, and it didn't come to pass. Na yate katuwa bata la bakochi intucho na shivadeo nga bagambe, chigambo chakatonda chayo gira, chasubiza na yate tewali chivadeo. But this shows you that you have to mix the word with faith. Nekati e chawandi kwa chino chetusomye chikula ze, ntino o ino kugato kukiriza kuchigambecho. It's like faith is the secret sauce. It's the ingredient that makes everything else work. Chiri nganga kati mchikule tedebwenti, nti o kukiriza, yensulo e talabika, nti obache chirungo, cho ino kugatamu mubintubyo no kulabanga bikola. Just because you have a Bible and carry it under your arm, or even if you can quote the scriptures. But if it's not in faith, then the Word of God doesn't release its power. It has to be mixed with faith in order for you to receive it. So the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt, but they weren't in faith. They were in unbelief. And they rebelled against God ten times is what he said. In Numbers chapter 14, when he was saying that they would dwell in the wilderness for 40 years, and die in the wilderness, because that's what they said, would to God we had died in this wilderness. So he says, all right. I'm going to do what you said. Because you've tempted me now these ten times. He said himself that there were ten times that they had spoken against him when they doubted that he could provide them water. And Moses had to hit the rock and water came out of the rock. And then they... The water was bitter one time and Moses had to put a tree into the water and heal the waters and then they complained about not having any... Food to eat, and God sent a manna, and then they got tired of the manna and complained that they wanted flesh to eat. And God did that, and anyway, there was ten times that they rebelled at God. And so they were not in faith. They were in unbelief. And yet God had done these great things for them. Did you know there's a direct parallel? Between that and us, and some of you, you may think, well, I didn't come out of Egypt. 
kati manyintu waluwa inzo kugamba gwa uliranti hii atenze sava komisiri. We came out of something even worse than that, worse than physical bondage. Kankubuli de tuwava ati katife mchintuwe chisinga dara ne misiri. Kankubuli tuwavi la dara mchintuwe chisinga nobu no, sibo obo mubiri. And slavery is being the slave to sin. Nobu du luwachi okubero musibe elie chibi. You know it says Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3 we were by nature the children of wrath even as others so we were by nature a child of the devil but there's also other scriptures Erola bakati wagambira mbefeso 23 ntino twali abana abokubula olaba no obogenzo okulabira maddala mu byawandikwe bilala byonna They talk about whoever commits sin is the servant of sin Wagambira ntino buli buli muntu yenna akole ekibi oyaba muddu wa kibi All of us were servants to sin. All of us were slaves. And Jesus has redeemed us from that slavery and he has brought us out. Of a life of defeat and negativism. Uh, much more so than what the Israelites were delivered from. Physical bondage is nothing compared to emotional, spiritual bondage. And the truth is, if you've been born again, you have been delivered. You have been raised from the dead. You have been brought out of your slavery. But just like these people, even though they experience that physical deliverance, they didn't believe God. They didn't mix the word with faith. And because of it, they died and never experienced what God really intended them to have. Likewise, there's people watching this program that you've invited the Lord into your heart. You really have made Jesus your Savior. If you were to die, you would go to heaven. But you are not experiencing the freedom and the liberty that Jesus purchased for you. Because you aren't mixing the word with faith. You're just in total unbelief. You are letting circumstances and people and things dominate you instead of the Word of God. I'm not saying that to hurt you. I'm glad that you're watching this program. Praise God. I believe that God had you tune in so that you could hear some things today. That would help you. I'm not saying this to hurt you, but I am saying it to enlighten you and recognize that you, you don't have any justification. To say that the word doesn't work. The word works. Perfectly, but you have to mix it with faith. And this says the word preached unto them did not profit them not being mixed with faith. In them that heard it. And then in verse 3, he says, For we which have believed do enter into rest as he said. And this is a quotation from Genesis chapter uh, 2. 
As I, excuse me, this is from the uh, psalmist. This is from David. Referring back to Genesis chapter 2, which after God created the heavens and the earth, he said he rested on the seventh day. This is Genesis chapter 2. And then David referred back to this, and this is quoting David as saying, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. This is talking about that God spent six days creating the earth and then he rested from all of his labors. Verse 4, For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, this is talking about the seventh day of creation and God did rest the seventh day from all of his works. So that's in Genesis chapter 2. After he had created the heavens and the earth, it said he rested. And then hundreds of years later, actually thousands of years later, the uh, prophet David, King David, came along and in verse 5 it says he said in this place again they shall enter into my rest. So it says God rested on the Sabbath day but then thousands of years later here's David still talking about a rest. That people didn't enter into the rest of the Lord. And the rest of this, I'm just going to summarize it because in the King James, this is really awkward. It's old English terminology. But here's basically what he's saying that God spoke of taking a rest. On the seventh day of creation. And then thousands of years later, David came along. And talked about that these people did not enter into the rest of the Lord. And he was quoting. From, from Genesis chapter 2. So that shows you that this rest was not just something that happened one time where God rested on the seventh day. But there was a rest that he intended for us to have. And this is what these verses are saying. And when Joshua led the children of Israel into the promised land, that wasn't the complete fulfillment. Of entering into his rest because hundreds of years after Joshua, Here's King David saying, if they shall enter into my rest. So he says all of these things. And he says in verse 9, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. And so this rest, man, for a long time, I struggled with this. 
kati cheche njaga loku gamanti e chuo mulo chino e miaka mingi nyo naringa ntoba na chonga sitegera. Thinking what does this mean to rest? Because my concept of rest nga nebu zane chiche chitegeza okumula kubanze endaba yange eye chumulo was like when you're tired nze njira vila mkubanti okoye you just go lay down and you do nothing ila no genda no kaka na wansi no tabako chokola and yet this says in verse 11 let us labor to enter into the rest kademu lo kuminemu wano wagambi na antikale tufubengo kuyingira mchumulecho this isn't talking about a rest where you do nothing no recho kati wantayo gela kuchuumulo chotu lao nga toina chokola. And you are just totally inactive. Ngoli yao toina chinducho nache wenye giramu. And because I didn't understand what this rest was. No recho roku banti na iste gela chuumulo chino chichari. Uh, I struggled for a long time. What is this talking about? So here's basically what the Lord showed me. Chanyi kola bu chanto na toba nyo kutege ilanga nebu za needa da da chiche chogela kuchino. Kachino katonda che yandaga. When the Lord said that he rested on the seventh day from his creation. That wasn't because he was tired. I mean, just think, he had created the entire universe, he had created millions, billions of stars. Planets. He'd created all of the animals here, the people. He created all the vegetation. And on and on. And I mean, he's bound to have been worn out, and so he had to rest on the seventh day. No, the scripture says, in Isaiah, I believe it's chapter 40, that I'm the Lord. I don't get tired. I don't grow weary. God doesn't have to sleep. He doesn't have to go rest. God wasn't tired. It wasn't like he said, if I create one more star, I, th- I may pass out. No, God doesn't get weary. He wasn't tired. He didn't rest. In the sense that he had to refresh himself. When this is talking about rest, it's talking about that he ceased from his labor. He was complete. It was through. It's like when an artist paints a picture. And he has put everything in it that he's got. And if he adds one more brush stroke to that thing, He's going to turn a masterpiece into a failure because it's complete. He can't add anything to it. It's perfect. And so he rests. From his painting, not because he's worn out. And because that paintbrush is so heavy. No, it's not that he's resting because he's tired. He's resting because it's complete. You can say the same thing about a lawyer. That a lawyer, you know, will present his case and then he'll say the defense rest or the prosecution rest. And what they're saying is that I'm through. It's complete. I've said everything that I've got to say. There's nothing else that I can say. 
mtiba nange mba gambie koti mula muzo wechiti wanku gambie bulichimucho nache nino kuogera ila kati bulichimolo kubanchi kugambie kati nino kuumula so this is what the lord did when he rested norecho kati chino mukama che yakola anga umude on the seventh day it wasn't because he was tired it's because it was complete kulunako uruwa musamfu suru wakubanti yali yako ye neru wakubanti bulichimucho na chari chimalirizidua and if you remember back last week I was using this example from Genesis chapter 1. And in Genesis 1, he created the heavens and the earth. He created the earth. He drew all of the land into one place. Then he created all of the vegetation on the earth. And then he created all of the animals on the land and all of the animals in the sea. And then he created man. And he did all of these things and then he rested. Not because he was tired. But because it was complete. And back last week, I was making this point that he didn't just create man, create animals. And then man gets hungry and he says, oh, I forgot about food, so let me create food for it. No, that's not what he did. He had anticipated that we would need to eat and so he created all of the food for us and for all of the animals in the sea all of the animals on the land all of the animals in the air he anticipated this and he already created it and and did you know when he created all of the vegetation on the earth? This is really significant. If you turn over to Genesis chapter 1, let me just read a little bit of this to you. It says that um, God said in verse 11, Let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so ah kumi nemu agamanti katona na yo gera anti nc emere bimera omuddo ogubala ensigo omutigo ebibala ogubala ebibala mungeri yago ogulimu ensigo yago kunsi era bwe kitu we kyali now that's wordy and sometimes we just think well you know the bible they just said things strange and we think that it's just strange and we we don't think there's a purpose to it but why didn't he say just let there be trees let there be grass let there be herbs because if he would have just created the original creation then any time one of those trees died, he would have had to created, create new trees, new grass, new herbs, new fruit. But the way he stated it is very significant. Let the earth bring forth grass. The herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit. After his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. What this means is, that God made creation. Not only did he create the original trees and plants and grass and everything, but 
but he made it so that it could procreate. He put within every plant. Na ye ya bitonda nga chafa, ntibidi no kubanga vye kubisa, mubi no kubanga vye vye njini vye vizara. Every tree, every fruit. Elola ba ntino, mubulibi mera, bulibibara, bulimudu. Seed so that it could procreate. Yateka mu ensigo luachi, bisobolo kubanga vye vye njini vizara. And he did the same thing with animals. He told the animals to be fruitful. And multiplied. And animals sow seed. He did the same thing to people. He told us to be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth. Did you know that since the original creation, God has never created another tree, another plant, another animal, another bird, another fish, or another person. Now, we were all created in his image, but it is through Adam and Eve and then their descendants, and they've sown seed. We aren't a unique creation in the sense that Adam was. We are an extension of Adam. We have been procreated through Adam. And, and the reason that this is significant is to say that when God created everything, He thought through creation so completely that I'm just amazed. You know, the more I learn about creation, I'm amazed at the thought, the effort that God put into it. You know, we breathe oxygen. We breathe the air. We exhale carbon dioxide. And if God hadn't have made it so that the atmosphere could be purified, we would eventually die of carbon monoxide poisoning, but he's created it so that the trees and the grass and things they take this carbon dioxide and they use it and then they put out oxygen. God thought through all of this so that now he doesn't have to say, well, man, I didn't know that there was going to be this many people on the earth. And now I've got to adjust and I've got to do something new. No, when he rested, he had anticipated everything that could ever happen. On this earth. And he rested. He has never done anything else. He doesn't have to get up in the morning and say, let there be a million new cattle to replace all the ones that were killed and eaten. Let there be a million new birds who died, you know, ran into a car or something, and all of the insects. He doesn't create anything. He created the original, and he set into motion the procreation so that the 
Katona tada mkutonda chintu cho na yatonda ebintu nebigwa era kati ebintu bili mkwe kubisamu byoka na byoka. The creation continues on and when it says he rested Ulaba antikati buliweche uobigena angabie yongeda bizara yeche chuchaga mantie ya umula. Not because he was tired but because it was complete and he has never created Suru akubanti ntino ya liyako yeneda ya umula ilaka tada mkutonda chintu chidara chona another animal another bird tujja musanga tonda chisolo oba chinyonyi another person he doesn't have to create new animals to replace the ones who died tada mukutonda oba bisolo byonanti atebidde mu bifo byebye byafa new trees to replace the ones that were burned or that died njoba tonde miti jide mu ejo je twafumba mu amanda ne je twate mamu embawo he's built creation so that it just can maintain itself. And without me going into a lot of details, this is one of the reasons that I don't buy in to all of the environmental stuff. And people saying that in 10 years the earth is uninhabitable abavayo no 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 nembalirira nga bagama ntino mu myaka 10 okuva kati banange nensege nakubate chabere kamu I just read something this last week about all of the predictions era kati nina ne chemba de juandi ko chena badde nsoma weekend ye wedde nga batebereza that were made in the 1950s and 60s and they said that by 1970 something the population of the world there would be extreme famine ina batebereza yo mujenka agane nga batebereza byaka kati nga bagama nti emyaka jino ejijjo kujja maso yo enjale egenda kuba nnyingi nyo because we cannot sustain i think it was 5 or 6 billion people on this planet mbukubanga ensege na kwati so tsobola kulabirira kuwanirira bantu bubumbi mukaga ne no businggawo of course now we know in hindsight that we've got over 7 billion people on the planet na yate kati kusinzira nga we manyi tulina abantu bubumbi nga musanvu no kusingawo kunsi And the United States alone could supply enough food for the entire world if we were to remove all restraints and just Natola banti America yo ka fetisobola okulabanga tuli sense yo nawe tuba tujewo bwa kulizo bonna you know use it to the max tuba tujewo bwa kulizo ne tukozesa buli kimucho nache tusobola okukozesa All of these predictions have been wrong. All of the predictions about the earth coming to an end and about us destroying this fragile planet Olaba antinno buno 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 yabadde batebereze eri enseno byona byona yabadde bulimba bito yabadde bitufu mbusimanya tono nyo obutonde bwenso okubumala wo byonna It's it's people that don't understand that God anticipated everything that the human race would ever do Abantu batategera ntinno katonda yalowoza buli kimucho na abantu cheba abana abantu cheba likola And he built a, an ability to repair itself to purge itself into this planet. Era na zimba bulichimucho na enkole gendo kuyamba ense no kusigala wonga weringe tasibwa. Now I'm not saying that we should trash this planet. Atena nange sibaga banai tugende tuonono obutonde bwensi butubutu buyonone bwetu tyo. You know, I get upset with people that drive by and throw their empty bottles and Nze nange nyigira dalana abantu abavuga emodoka za ene bagena nga bakasukaga chupa buli wamu. Trash out on my property. You shouldn't do stuff like that. Nzola banange wange wano sabe ya dalamu mtu asula sura bichupa chupa webitu tusobola kuchikola. I believe in taking care of things. Iranzikiriza dalamu kula bidire ebintu obulungi naye. But I do not believe that the earth is fragile. Nale sagala kulowoza ntino NC eringa nge chatika. And the earth had the climate has cycles and stuff like this it regulates itself. Ntikugama anti obutonde bwensi nti buli buli chibuchi buina ebintu byachita mu obwenja ulontika nedda wabula buli chimucho na chera bidira. All of their predictions about all of the things that would happen the I say Era kati ba tebereze ntebereza nnyingi nyeze nja ulonti simanya wagena kuba wo mulembe nga gogwa muzira gokka. When I was a kid in school we were going to enter into an ice age. Nze wena linchi ali kusomero ba tugama nganti a tugenda mulembe gwa muzira mwerere. And now it's going to be global warming and all of these it's just wrong. Mbwate kati ensebenga eyo cha nyo byona 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 byabulimba. And it doesn't take into account that God rested 
Atira chino tubele chutandi sekuchiro woza anti katonda ya umula. Anticipated everything that would happen and built into his creation. Ngatege debi ntube na nevili bawo ero butonde buwe na zimbira mwe nkola. The ability to adapt and to overcome these things. Nobu sobozi, obu sobolo okubanga e obutonde bui midira nebu vunuka e bizibu bio nabi nevili bawo. The scripture tells us how this world is going to end and it's not going to end through environmental pollution. Ebya wandiko bitu agabulunji ensi wegendo kutuka ku nkomerero era tetulaga tebitulaga ntino bigenda egenda kutuka ku nkomerero lokubanga abantu bate miyomuti simanya kasasiro wa muyiwe mu nyanja and things like this. Nebi ntwebiringe bya bula katonda. God is going to destroy this earth when it comes his time and when he comes back a second time. Karuna yinyini agendo okwe marira wense no nge kisera che kituse ogwo mulundi ogwo kubirirwa nadda. And so anyway my point is he rested not because he was tired but because he had thought through every detail. No reche chikuru chidi nti njogera mu chiwumulo nti te yawumula kubanga ali akoye wabula yawumula ro kubanti ali amazo kwe kanya buli kimucho na. In such intricate uh, fashion that there was just nothing left for him to do. He doesn't have to do anything. Ngera amazo kitegerera dala nti buli kimucho na chikoze era te wali kyasobola kugattako era ona umula. And that has a direct application to us. Irakati echo nafe chechi ntu chetulina okubanga chituwecho okukole cha amanyi. I haven't got time to go into this fully, but let me just give you a tease. Aira manyiti sobra kugena mchino chirara chonane eka maloku wayo echo okukola. Of what I'll be sharing tomorrow, our new creation, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Ira kubikulire ko kuchichiche ngendo kuogira kona korencha, bakuli nse echo kubirita tano kuina musamvu obutondo obuja. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Pagamira antio ye na abera mu Kristo abera kitonde kijja and in this new creation in our spirit ira kati mu butonde buno obujja mu moyo wafe God has given us everything that we will ever need ngakura ganti katonda atuwade bulichimucho nache tulietaga just as in creation nothing sneaks up on him there is no problem no environmental problem or any other type of problem Ngamu butonde wata lichi ntucho nacho nachi mujita konte ya te giranti sima nya kutema miti atebi no vyo butonde. That is gonna challenge his plans for this planet. Te wali nduwa de era te wali chintucho nachi genda kulabanga chiteka wansu butonde bwe nga te yamanya. Likewise there's nothing that you can ever encounter. No recho na weke njini ya loko kate wali chintucho nachi wagena kusisinkana. That will ever stump God that he hasn't given you power to overcome when he created you. When you were born again in Christ Jesus, you've got everything in you that you need. And the rest of the Christian life is learning how to rest Ira kati obulamu bobo na obusigadde obwoku kiza oina kuyiga ngeri je bawumula in what Jesus has already done ngo umulira mwecho Yesu cyo yakoledda you've already got it you need to quit fighting and just rest e buli kimu wachiwe bwadda olina kulekera okulwana kuchifuna no yiga okuwumula God has brought us here to change all of us every person here this is one of the major things you're looking for is change in your life. Changing, growing, experiencing the supernatural testimonies of God within your life. Karis has made an enormous impact to me. It has opened up doors that I could have never have opened myself. All of those dreams and desires that you've had in your heart and you can learn how to step out of Karis Bible College and immediately begin your vision or your business or whatever it is you want to do. At this point, and it's only been two years, I can't imagine going through life without this anymore. The greatest thing you will ever do is renew your mind by the Word of God. You're going to get laser focused on your purpose and on your gifts and on your calling and you're going to go out and change the world. Amen. You can determine your destiny. I want to let you know that we have now started a Karis Daily Live Bible Study. We've been doing a Bible study every Tuesday night live for about two years, but now we have five days a week. We've varied the times so that we can accommodate anybody's schedule, and it's going to really be good. We're going to use our instructors from the school 
and it'll be a blessing. So remember, we now have a Karis Daily Live Bible Study, five days a week. Hello, my name is Rich Kanyali, Director of Andrew Mark Ministries and Karis Bible College in Uganda. Did you know that you can enroll at Karis Bible College anytime through the year? With our correspondence program, this gives you the opportunity to study all your classes and do all your exams online at your own pace. You can study at your very, very good comfort in your living room, at your workplace, in the village, anywhere you are, anytime, any place. And so if you're really interested in enrolling here at Karis Bible College, please call our enrollment counselors on 701 422-747. This number is also on WhatsApp or you can call 0778-556570 or you can visit us here at our headquarters at uh, Buganda Road, Park Royal Plaza, Levels 5 and 6 or you can even apply at karisuganda.net. We love you and God bless you. We look forward to seeing you. To receive today's teaching and learn more about Andrew Womack Ministries, visit our website. While there, you can find more product details and discover many of Andrew's teachings. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I just want to speak to all of you who are watching in Africa that we now have three locations in Africa where we have offices there. And the reason we've done this is just so that we can serve you better, so that you, we can get materials to you quicker, so that you can come and receive. We actually have a bookstore there in Kampala, Uganda. But we have offices in Uganda. We have offices in Zimbabwe and also in South Africa. South Africa now has three Karis Bible Colleges, one in Cape Town, one in Heidelberg, and one in Johannesburg. And then we have our school, and office in Zimbabwe, and then we also have a school and office in Kampala, Uganda. And we just encourage you to take advantage of these local uh, offices and schools because they can minister to you at a greater level. Ngoyaga lo kumanya bisinga wo kumasomo ga fega no oba ku ministry osobola kuba ku namba ya fe eyesimu eyaba uliriza aba fenge nerine ku WhatsApp group eranga osobola kuweleza SMS oba no kuba nga ogama anti mungatte ko WhatsApp group yaba uliriza oba ngobuze chibuzo chonna e namba ya simu eno eri 0 msanvu 0 mukaga 0 mukaga muenda 3 m5 ngambye eri 0 msanvu 0 mukaga Zero Mukaga, Muenda Satu, Emutano. That is zero seven zero six zero six nine three one five. Ojakubo Yambiwa, Ojakubo Yungiwa, Kugrupiawa Uri Zabafi. You are blessed.